Hey guys, get ready to get your socks knocked right back onto your feet. Mm, I don't <laughs> think that's a saying. And if that's your attempt at an intro, come on, that's we good. just lost half the audience. <laughs> uh, Will, your turn. Oh, that was good. <laughs> get ready to get your socks good. knocked back oh, onto dear. your feet. <laughs> Because that'd be a hell of a podcast. What, what were you thinking about? <laughs> Come on. Were you trying it's... to do an intro? Yeah, that was good. Because hey I reversed that. There. I reversed get it. ready to get Hey, your get ready to get back. your hair blown back onto your <laughs> hips. Like, what? <laughs> this is going to unblow your mind. I, this <laughs> is going to tighten your That's socks and laces up wow, on your shoes. God damn it. <laughs> Just say welcome to Smartless. Welcome to Smartless. Smartless. Hey, welcome everybody. <laughs> hey guys. Hey, how excited are you? I will. Well, Hi. look, have you ever had apple juice and ice like this? It tastes really delicious. Oh. Is that what you washed down your egg salad with? Yeah, a little bit. I had a little bit of eggs today and a bagel with cream cheese. Wait, 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 wait. If we turned you inside out, will we just see a big American flag? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bless your heart. Wait, Sean, so what, what, did you start, what did you start with today? You started with the bagel? What, I do what, a half of the plain bagel. Plain bagel. I do a full bagel, half is cream cheese, half is butter. Okay. But it's plain. Oh, good it's for plain, you. right? Yeah, make plain, make yeah. no doubt. It's a plain bagel. It's a plain bagel. Do you ever like, do you ever try to like save the time? Cause you got to slice it and put it. Do you ever just like take a slug, like a bite of the bagel and then just a big sliver of, of cream cheese and put it eat both that in. and then some butter <laughs> just straight down the hatch? It'd be faster. That's for sure. Right. More because efficient. you're wasting a lot of time, it seems like. But you're, a, but you're a plain bagel eater. I've, I, yeah. I've, I, I, I don't know any, any of you. Um, well, why, 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 you? why, why put it, you're going to put stuff on it. Why well, have it in there? That's like just eating straight white bread. Uh, most yeah, people go that's for all I some do. kind of a flavor. Um, no, you put uh, the like, flavor in the sandwich. But you, have you not tried an onion bagel, sesame bagel, no, poppy seed bagel, everything need, bagel? No, you, no but have you ever tried it? No, I can smell it. So then therefore I've tried You've it. You've never tried it? No, I've only eaten plain bagels. I mean, it's undeniably it. better just than try. just a flat tasting piece of you know, round yeah. white okay, bread. Okay, look, I'll try it. I'm, I'm open you're 52, to it. I'll try next you're, time. you're 52 years old. At okay. least. I know. Another thing I'd like to get you in on is this uh, this this torture that, that Will's, <laughs> Will has dropped me into this torture chamber uh, that uh, Sam Jones, uh, our friend who directed the, uh, the, the, the behind-the-scenes tour thing of Smartless. The special that's coming out. Yeah. 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 Um, and then also one of our guests, uh, Matt Damon, is also involved Mr. in this Matthew torture Damon. chamber. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a smartless torture chamber, oh, and the only portal? person missing is you and also Scott. I'll, so I'll do it. We're doing this, yeah, we do the Wordle, Quirtle, and Octortle every morning. Yeah, and it's... Uh, and then we have to do an aggregate score, and it's torturous. Well, it's it, I have, I have, a, I have a, an issue with the Octortle people. Um, <laughs> and listener, this is the <laughs> eighth puzzle. So stupid. But yeah, they, so they think what of these, have? like, we get it, you're bright. You come up with these words that no one's ever heard of. But that's a hat on a hat. It's already difficult to figure out the eight words. We don't I need know. to also figure out words in a basically a different language can i just you know? say something man it's can hard I just to say, figure out the five letter word well, can yeah. i just say something jason good for you man you know good for I'm you just, for I've finally had it. standing up i need no, to finally I speak and out I i've been afraid to speak out because i don't is... i don't want blowback <sighs> man hey hey have you guys ever played mafia remember i talked about mafia like a year ago it's not a word game what, are you we're not, not just sean are you just doing loose association of ideas no i'm the last us finishing talking is not your cue to come up with a different subject no, I, I was telling you what I was doing last night. We, Speaking we of. We played Mafia because um, you guys are talking about games. Our, uh, our, our guest today, guys, you see that? Oh, like, we're just going to get right into yeah, it. We're are you tired of talking? This. Yeah, wow. yeah, no, no, yeah, no. But right. it just this person. They even said like, hello. Because this man. man is a director. What? Oh. And there are very few. Jason, I love bringing directors in for you because I just see you get all giddy. I and just all got scary. nervous. I, ask I him know. How he sets up shots <laughs> and how he lights certain angles. And he's not just a director. He's a director of some of the biggest comedies and the biggest films of all time, incredible mm -hmm. blockbusters, and also has produced some of the biggest, if not arguably the biggest now, television show. 
Question um, mark. Certainly question in mark, Netflix question history. Mark. Question mark. Why, why? This oh, is somebody I who's Canadian. Who this, this is somebody shown that Jason, you've talk worked about with. nice hair. Here I mean, he talk goes. about great hair. I talk can't about wait to see the outfit. Movies. There's a little it's giggle. Little Sean, <laughs> lady, lady. <laughs> <laughs> How about this guy? How about this guy? Oh, hi, God. guys. Look, are you in a, looks like you're in a um, <laughs> sort of an economical hotel. Um, <laughs> it's just a Hungarian hotel. Are you, uh, are am, you in a hotel? I'm in a, I'm in a hotel room where I have lived for four and a half months in Budapest, <gasps> which is the longest I've ever been on location and the furthest that I've ever been on location and probably the last time that I will go this far away for this long. But Did hi, you bring, friends. Hi, Wait, Sean. Why are you there? Man. Oh, you're lucky, listeners. This is a good yeah, man. Yeah, this is great. Tuck in. I can't wait to talk about Stranger Things. I can't wait to talk about all the movies. This is so exciting. But, but Sean, I feel like there's no way we can let go today without... I feel like there. we had a moment, apparently in a casting session of a night oh. at the museum. Because, <laughs> yes, I've listened to every episode. <laughs> that's, that's right. So I've that's already right. gotten into Bateman's anti-turtleneck <laughs> yes, manifesto. Yes. Uh, yes. But I handled that... But, off air. But yeah, he, you're one of the three people that can pull it off. Yeah, well, to remind the viewers, or the viewers, the listeners, that, that I auditioned for one of the Night at the Museum movies, uh, and Which you were part? so kind to call me in. And Which part? It was, it was for Napoleon, I think. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah. And, uh, huh. and, and then I went Walk, in and I was Walk like, got that part, didn't he? Who did? <laughs> Joaquin. It's just an inside <laughs> joke. <laughs> yeah. He just wrapped it. He just wrapped it. Just wrapped oh, he, the, that's right. He played Napoleon. Napoleon. He's, going, he's playing Ridley Napoleon. Scott, yeah. Pushing anyway, I, went a in with a, with it. I went in with a bunch of ideas and like uh -oh. a dickwad, and you were like looking at me like, uh huh, maybe you can direct it too. Oh, really? No, but I feel Wait. like, no, so yes, Sean, that did is, you come Sean, with that line? I think I might have, according to Sean Hayes, <laughs> Sean Levy, a young Sean Levy, said, uh, oh, did you want to direct it too? Oh, yeah. But here's the thing, Sean, you, you don't know me that well. I don't do dry. Shawnee don't play dry. <laughs> yeah. So I think I was going, that's like an Arnett move. That's a Bateman yeah. fucking yeah. superpower. Yeah. But as as you know, and as you can probably tell already, I don't do dry very well. It I did make me going, chuckle. But I think I, I'm not sure the humor came across because I was off tone. And now oh, I've learned God. to stay in my lane. <laughs> no, I like to be case. obvious with my humor. But while we're overseas, though, <laughs> let's, get, let's get back to Hungary. What are you doing in Hungary? And you've been there four and a half months. I'll bet it's yeah. something fabulous. Let's hear it. It, it is something fabulous. Um, and so that is kind of what gets me through it. I, um, I am doing, there was a book, I don't know if any of you read it, called All the Light We Cannot See. I don't know. Oh, and this we book just it. came out for real? No. See, I don't do dry. That's a callback. <laughs> yeah. Also yeah. used in comedy. Sean, um, Sean Levy, just so you know, if you ever reference a book again, and the, neither of them has read a book in TV years. Guide was the last book I read. I read. I, by the way, I read three this week. Go ahead. Okay. Well, no there joke, was a book. Wow. There was a book called All the Light We Cannot See. It won the Pulitzer Prize, and it was a bestseller like seven years ago. And uh, they were going to do it as a movie, and I couldn't even get a meeting on it. And then I kind of waited and waited because I'm all about the long term long term goals. Um, yeah. And uh, and I found out about three years ago that the rights were available, and I chased it. And I said to the novelist, "What if we do it as a limited series? Because that is such you know in you the seven years, in yeah. and you get all your book in there. It's exactly right." And so then I decided to direct all of the episodes myself. <gasps> so I am That's here. Wow. Um, it's intense. Wow. How many episodes? There's, it's only four episodes, but it's like a 90 day shoot, which is wow. even the, even my biggest movies are 70 day shoots. What, yeah. What's the, what's the elevator pitch? Like, what's it about? It's World War II. There's a blind French girl and her father who are running from the Nazi invasion in France, and they're living in a coastal city in France. Her dad is Mark Ruffalo. Her uncle is Hugh Laurie. Right. And I cast, I decided I wanted to do this with an actress who was actually blind. Oh, so wow. we did a global search, and we found this, this young woman named Aria Liberti who has never been auditioned for a part. And she is legally blind, and as you can imagine, it has been unlike any shoot that I've ever done. That's now, cool. Sean, not to get into, Olivia, not to get into the weeds, but so when you have a legally blind actor, um, what do you do about, like, if you have a real specific mark that an actor needs to hit because of technical issues with a dolly move or light or something like that? Like, how do you get around that? Well, uh, very often what we do is you put a little piece of rope. Oh, uh, sandbags. A, a sandbag is a tripping hazard. I've learned that the hard yeah. way. Mm. So you literally put a little piece of twine underneath tape. And the truth is when you don't have sight, you're, all your other senses you use 
so intensely, yeah. including touch, and you use your feet as other things that can feel. So wow. she finds her mark with her feet. She, When she asks where the camera is, she's asked us to, we literally will snap where the camera wow. is because she uses sound to wow. echolocate and map the room. That's fascinating. Uh, wow. it, every day is fascinating, and we have this kind of 20-something playing the grown-up version of this character, Marie, and we have this seven-year-old who is also blind named Nell, who we found in a small town in Wales, and she is playing the younger version. And so you've got these experienced people like Ruffalo and Hugh Laurie, and, you know, it's this big, epic World War II kind of drama. How old is the, is the, is the young woman playing the blind character? She is in her mid-20s, um, and, the, and the younger is now seven. So that's got to be wild for somebody in their mid twenties. Not only just an actress with sight, but an actress without sight, mm. learning the ropes of camera blocking, lighting, uh, like cues, and just all of that. It's fascinating. Well, we've all had visitors come to a set at some point, and you see that people don't understand this strange workplace that is not like any kind of normal workplace. Yeah, and yeah. so so she's got that, but she's also, she's never even acted. She never even was wow. aspiring to act. She wow. found out about this search from a teacher she had when she was 11. And she wow. sent in an iPhone video out of hundreds and she made it round after round after round after round, and then she got the part. So, well, let me wow. ask you this, because this wow. makes sense. She, she, obviously, she's never seen a film or a television program uh, by virtue of her not having the power of sight. But has she? Thanks for putting that together, Will. Yeah, but well, I was going to say, well, no, I mean, it's, sometimes uh, you got to connect the dots for me. No, now I'm with obviously you. Obviously, it stands yeah. to reason. But I was going to say, is she aware of? She's stuff heard through tons pop of culture. Them, has she? No. Yes, what I was asking yeah. has she heard a lot of that stuff? Is she in touch with stuff in that way? Paul? Very much. Yeah, yeah, like okay. she's seen every Marvel movie. She came into this. She had, I did a movie two years ago called Free Guy that she'd seen a bunch yeah. of times. She knows Stranger Things. So she is very steeped in pop culture, but she's not watching it. She right. is she is using audio description, and she loves it, but it's just in a different way. So That's how I watch Ozark with my eyes closed. Oh, Same fuck. thing. Yeah. So an act, well, at least I'll speak for myself. I, I, I watch what I do and learn how to be better by noticing the things that I don't do well. If I didn't have my eyes, I wouldn't be able to see that. So how does one, how does one become a good actor if you've never seen not only what good actors do, but how you look when you feel an emotion, how knowing how that comes across, how you're able to. That's the crux of it. That's it. That's literally, we go through this almost every day where she'll play a scene and she might play it great, but maybe she's doing stuff with her face that is too busy and she doesn't see herself or other actors. And she's, ne she's never seen a smile. She's never seen different yeah, versions wow. of a smile. And she's not seen herself in a mirror. Yeah. Mm, wow. So it's it is it is profound every day. And so what I what what she's learned is oh okay understand where the camera is like we've all learned calibrate what yeah. you're doing based on the size of your face right. on that screen and the size of the lens. And she'll ask is and I've taught her like like many film school bootcamp wow. like this is a medium shot. I'm at your waist. Then we're gonna move right. the camera and suddenly it's more head to toe, so you can be a little freer. But what I've learned also, I mean, I've directed 13 movies now. Mm -hmm. And I had, and Jason, I've directed you obviously, but like I use my face to direct yeah. so much. So right. like I might say cut, Jace, let's, mm, and I'll make a face, right? right. And I'll indicate what I oh, want I, in the next take. I got take. that one a lot from you. That was, listener, that was a, that was a not so much face. I got that mm. from, from Sean a lot. Like, mm. hey, great, Jason, but mm. Maybe it's it's kind so of it's, it's suggesting 180 degrees, like the absolute <laughs> opposite of what whatever you're doing. You're doing can we yeah. just flip it? Or, or we As have I that. Call it, uh, we have that. No, I, I prefer this got one. Got that one. I prefer, we got that version. Right. That's I high eyebrows. I love that we have that. High Thank eyebrows. you. That's yeah. high eyebrows. Yeah. And I'll do this yeah. hand gesture, like when Kobe used high to make eyebrows. a shot and run back to play D, and he'd do the settle down hands. <laughs> just the settle. Yeah. 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 And so some of that would just go to. I'm like, hey, Jace, Jace. Uh, uh. And I would just kind of like <laughs> push my palms downward to, to yeah. stuff down. This the is a dramatic scene. Yeah. Easy on the comedy. Now, yeah. Sean, is it because of like, you know, Canadians are known for just being the nicest people in the world, but you have this energy about you because we had a breakfast like decades ago and you were so charming and so funny and so witty and you, you have this infectious joy 
joyous energy. I, I'm sure I'm not the 100%. only person to ever say that. That you no, must. It's so good to be around. Yeah, that that just must create this atmosphere on set. It's just a statement. I have no question. I just I just find you incredibly joyful. It's real too. It's you know you go you don't you don't know how somebody how somebody really is until you until you either play around to golf with them or you work a long schedule on a yeah, movie right. because you can't hide in those situations. I guess my question to that is what when you're filmmaking what really gets under your skin? Because I can't see you throwing a fit or getting angry. Well, it's funny because a, a, a mutual friend of a bunch of ours, I heard Ryan Reynolds to your show, and I've now done two movies in a row with Ryan. And his favorite I love Free thing- I by the way. His, thank you. His favorite thing is when it, it, he's like, oh, Sean, Shawnee's going dark. Shawnee's going dark. Uh -huh. And the truth <laughs> this, my it. version, well, you probably have, Jace, but it's like maybe the extent of it is like, guys, we got to go. We got, right. why are we not shooting? And <laughs> But I just get more absurd. My voice gets a little screechy right. and I use my hands even more so. But, you know, I think, I mean, I know a little bit about your backstory, Sean, because I listened to Smartless. Sure, and, sure. and I just, like my mom, she liked the bottle and it was not always oh. an easy childhood. And I just, I feel like I just willed myself towards happiness. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. not going to have a sad life. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to have a that. happy life. And I want the things I make to put that in the world. Was dad around growing up or? He was around and I would go over, um, you know, like for two days a week. Uh, and then when I was 13, I moved in with him and my stepmom and that family full time. Cause yeah. I just, I needed to kind of be safe. Was this in Montreal, Sean? Yeah. Yeah, it was a much. So your parents were split from when you were very, very, very young. Yeah, from the time I was three. Oh wow! And I didn't. It's weird because I didn't even. I never even talk about that stuff because a, who cares? And b, I do some sense of it's privacy. Nice. But now that I'm, you know, in the middle part of my life, I see, like everyone's like, I'm doing a drama now, yeah, right? Yeah. I've done a lot of comedies, and but what I've what I found is I just want to take feeling and put it on screen. And plus, you're like an incredible dad, too, with incredible daughters and incredible I have a wife. Lot of, and like, I've had a lot of practice. I have four daughters. Yeah. And we will be right back. Thank you to Solo Stove for supporting the show. So, you know, I have wonderful memories of making s'mores on my stove on my regular stove top in my kitchen. And those memories go far, far back, like at least a week ago. And I was like, Scotty was like, why are you making these on the stove when we could get solo stove? No joke. And uh, I was like, well, they're so fast and easy and there's no smell and there's no, you know, all this kind of stuff. He's like, that's what solo stove is. I was like, oh my God, what are you talking about? So we were talking about some of life's best moments happen around a roaring fire, right? And a smokeless fire pit from Solo Stove makes your outdoor moments even more memorable than doing things on your stove in your kitchen, right? Because instead of having to constantly dodge campfire fumes, you can sit back, relax, and actually enjoy the fire. Solo Stove fire pits are brilliantly engineered to be easy to use, and they're built to last. Easy to light with a few bits of starter, your fire is blazing in minutes. The stainless steel construction is designed to regulate airflow and burn more efficiently. So little smoke, you'll wonder how there's so much fire. So now what I do, if I want to s'more, we go in the back, we sit around the solo stove, and it's kind of creating like new campfire memories where they're supposed to be, not inside the house, if that makes any sense. They're so confident you'll love it. They offer a lifetime warranty and a 30-day free return policy. Right now you can get big discounts on all fire pits during solo stove summer sale and use promo code SMARTLESS at solostove.com for an extra 10 bucks off. That's solostove.com, promo code SMARTLESS for $10 off on top of their incredible summer sale discounts. Thanks to GoodRx for their support. On this show, we all love a good laugh. But when it comes to our prescriptions, there's nothing funny about overpaying. Especially now with summer in full swing, we'd all rather spend our hard-earned money having fun and enjoying a good laugh with family and friends. That's where GoodRx can help. You can use GoodRx to find prescription savings at pharmacies right in your neighborhood like CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, Vons, Walmart, and more. And GoodRx doesn't just work for new prescriptions. It can help you save big on your refills as well. Prescription prices change all the time, so be sure to check GoodRx for the best price before you head to the pharmacy for a refill. GoodRx is recommended by doctors, pharmacists, and millions of people across the country who have saved on their prescriptions. 
The really great thing about using GoodRx is how much money you save, uh, how maybe it's beaten your prescription copay, and how GoodRx has helped by giving you the information you need to compare prices and save, 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 save. So for simple, smart savings on your prescriptions this summer, check GoodRx. Go to GoodRx.com slash smartless. That's GoodRx.com slash smartless. GoodRx is not insurance, but can be used instead of insurance, Medicare, and Medicaid. In 2021, GoodRx users saved 81% on retail prescription prices. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, as a creative person in the world, you know, acting, writing, whatever I'm doing at the moment, playing piano, whatever it is, I need to have a healthy mind, right? You need to have a healthy mind to be creative. So it all works in tandem, right? So how well would you take care of, let's say, your car if you had to keep the same one your entire life? That's how our brains work. So why don't we treat them that way? How we care for our minds affects how we experience life. So it's important to invest time and care into keeping them healthy. There are plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, like learning a new language or taking power naps. I love that one. There's also BetterHelp Online Therapy. So like, for example, the other week, I was feeling really kind of under the weather. It wasn't COVID. It wasn't the flu. I don't know what it was. It was allergy related, whatever it was. It made me really kind of depressed because I wasn't feeling myself. And I couldn't really create anything because I was stressed out about it. And so I need to release that stress when I'm feeling that way. And the great way to do that is to talk to somebody, to talk to a therapist if you can. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash smartless. That's betterhelp.com slash smartless. And now back to the show. So you have four, how old are your daughters? They are 22 down to 11. So wow. 22, wow. 20, 15, 11. So it's, and a wife of 28 years. Yeah. And so it's- uh, That's, I mean, it says it all. Are they with you in Hungary? They're, they're not with you in Hungary. Actually, you know what? They, they, they've mostly not been, but they were here until a few hours ago. And literally my wife's parting words to me when I dropped out at the airport is she's like, don't push it on Smartless. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> she literally, she knows that the more I love something- and this circles back to your question about like on set, I do tend to be pretty energetic because I love being there. Yeah. Mm. I love your show. Oh, I've never, I told your producers, oh, like I don't do, I can't think of doing press with something I love. And I've listened to pretty much every episode and it feels so authentic and funny as shit. And I'm so um, glad really you're on it. It's such, you fit right in. Well, that's very kind of you to say. I, we're, we're surprised always. I was telling my buddy Todd in, down in St. Bart's, good friend of mine. Yeah. We're always surprised that that people listen to, to the show. So thank you. I, I will say, I want to ask you a little bit about, uh, so you're in Montreal. And how does a guy from Montreal... Uh, go on to direct huge movies <laughs> and, be, yeah, and like become gigantic. Sean Levy. But for Tracy, let's just rattle off. I know because I feel like Tracy and many of your listeners, are like, who is this? No, and no. that's so, okay. Well, I it's get hard it. for us because here's one of the things: when I start to describe who it is and I start listing off your credits, then I know that immediately Bateman and, and Hayes are going to get it really quickly. So I'm trying to do it. So you directed 13 films, some of which are all the Night of the Museum movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, did you direct Cheaper by the Dozen? I did. Yeah. Super Brother Dozen. Yep. Free Guy, you yeah. did. Um, the God, recent yeah. one was called The Adam Project. You also directed Stranger Things. Stranger Things is the the weird... I, the, the, it started with a conversation with you, Jason, because we did a movie called This Is Where I Leave You. And in my experience, yeah. when, when you think you're making the thing that's going to change everything, it ain't the thing that's going to change everything. Right, so true. <laughs> right? So, like, because I was the family comedy guy, and I'd done, like, Pink Panther, and She Probably a Dozen, and Date Night, and Night Museum. Mm -hmm. And I found this book called This Is Where I Leave You, and I chased it for five years, and I got the cast of my dreams. It's Jason with Adam Driver and Jane Fonda and Ben Schwartz and Tina Fey. Catherine Hahn and Tina Fey. It was yeah. ridiculous. It was like a murderer's row every Corey day Stoll. in a little house. Corey yeah. Stoll. And um, no one went to their trailer. We stayed in the house and we we just, we shot 28 days that and it was so great. Fun. so good. And then it didn't do very well. And I then had to do a panel and Jason was the moderator. And I was, I was hurting because when you fail in this job, it's public. 
and mm-hmm. it hurts and all of us have felt it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Chase, I don't know if I can kind of like turn it on tonight. And he said, he goes, hey, we made someone's favorite movie. Might be one person's, might be a couple of dozen, but this movie, the people who are seeing it and who it resonates for, they're going to hold on to it. And it was this revolution. You don't even remember this conversation, Jason, but it was, I had lived and died by the sword of box office for so long. Mm -hmm. There was one metric of success. What's your opening weekend? What's your worldwide gross? right, right. Right. And I made those kinds of movies and I had a good run, but that was the beginning of, wait, maybe there's other measurements of why you do things. And there's other movies that don't lend themselves to popcorn box office. Yeah. You know? and, and there are plenty of movies that you know in the history of the cinema, if I can borrow that term from a bunch of young actors who have no reason or, you know, right to use it. Yeah. Give me a fucking break. It's like I hear a guy going, in the cinema, I'm like, you grew up in a fucking trailer in Florida. Shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> Call it but, movies. But there have been a lot of, you know, there are a lot of, uh, um, I guess my point is this. Sean, if you're ever trying to figure out how to deal with getting kicked in the nuts in show business and how to deal with it, just call me, man, because yeah. <laughs> I've got tons of experience. It's almost all I've had. I always joke that if it wasn't for bad movies, I wouldn't have made any at all. So it, it's it, so if you ever want to make yourself feel better, ever, you're just, just fucking about. call me. And Thank you like, for that oh. resource. And you just Thank go, oh, you. I'm a fucking success. What am I talking yeah. about? I just talked to Arnett. What a loser. <laughs> Wait, Sean, can I ask? Because you couldn't tell by his tan though the guy looks like a trillion dollars yeah you you got but you got paul anka type of tan going right now thank you another great canadian yeah Um, but but so wait hang on we never answered we we never answered this so you've got but sean i I, should i are you going to remember your question or should you want to ask i I was just going to say that that at the end of that year 2014 that happened i made the last night museum movie and then robin williams with whom i'd made three movies over 10 years died and i was just knocked aye, aye, out aye. and i said at that point like i'm gonna say no for a while and see what happens i'm gonna have because i'd done a movie a year for a decade right. and in that breath came arrival yes one of my favorite movies which I, and, all and, time. and and yeah. in that same moment came stranger things Wow. And those things changed everything it's, and have changed everything since. That's right. The, I was going to mention, those are the two. I mean, Arrival is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen it like 10 times. I mean, the the twit. Have you guys seen it? Yeah, yeah so we've seen, I've seen Arrival. But I want to get back to Sean. Before we get into that, I want to get back to right that moment you were just saying, that the, that moment changed your life. It was a shift of perspective that you had. Yes. Right? And once you were able to kind of get out, as you said, stop chasing this thing. Stop ch- tr- stop looking for that. Stop looking to measure your own success. We've talked about this based on ha- what you do or how you do in the box office. But mm-hmm. more, I'm going to say no because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find something because I don't know anymore. Right? In a certain way, you just kind of, it, 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 it's that ability to just let go and surrender to the process and just go, fuck it, I don't know. And also just to like, why did you guys start Smartless? Because I, as, as near as I can figure, it, you wanted to see what it was like, right? The pandemic yeah. was happening and who knows if this will be something. I remember texting with Jason early on. No one knew if it would become something. You did it because you wanted to and it seemed like it would be we wanted to do fun this. and interesting. Right and here, yeah. And the, the same thing, Stranger Things, no one wanted that show. I wasn't even in the TV business. I'm a movie director and these boys, these t- duffers came in with the best script I'd ever read. And That's I literally great. brought them into my office and I said, I don't know what's going to happen if anyone will watch it. But I yeah. definitely want to help you get it well, made. Well, I'm sure I'm not the last or the first person to say this, but you know, it gave me a lot of my childhood back. Yeah. It, re- it was like that's exactly how I live. Hopefully, I would go- you're the last to say that. <laughs> I mean, I know you're not the first. <laughs> but I would but ride my bike to my friend's house. We'd play Dungeons and Dragons. Sure. I mean, it's like yeah. so cool. But so, Sean, it was. It's just another example of how how keen your eye is for stuff that is going to be appealing for many, many, many people in addition to the fancy folks, because the fancy folks love all the commercial movies that you've done, including Stranger Things, but these things all get great reviews too. So what is yeah. it about, look, we can just take Stranger Things for an example. You said you're not sure if people are going to watch it, but you definitely saw something of value there to, to push forward and want to champion it. So what was it about that show and, and your eye in general that, that can find the populist thing that yeah. also is married to kind of the sophisticated thing? Well, I think the populist thing is if it has a theme that I think everybody wrestles with, 
that's when I say yes. So right. like Stranger Things, yeah, it was about a missing kid in another dimension, a monster, but it's really an anthem to outcasts. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is about the AV club, the people who don't fit in, yeah. who find each other, and their connection is their superpower. Right. That's everybody. Right. Every yeah. human has yeah. felt at points, whether as kids or teens or as adults, like, wait, where is my place in this constellation of people for whom life seems so much fucking easier? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And and when I just have a feeling that. A lot of people can relate to a, to an idea, to a theme. Those are the ones they said yes to. Like I said no to Free Guy five years ago when I read it as a script. But when Ryan read it and called me over and said, look, I'm not a big gamer either, but it's about someone who feels helpless in their world. It's oh, yeah. about a, a an actual literal background character living in a world that is shitty and they feel powerless in it. And considers that maybe they can do something in it. Mm -hmm. That's the theme of Free Guy. That's why I did Free Guy. No, the gaming stuff helps sell it, but it's not why we made it. Right, 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 right. So right. I'm always looking for theme, and that's what it was on Stranger Things. Well, I love that. Such a it's, great success it story. Changed, it changed so much. It was. It's just, a, it came along at the right time at the... Where is Stranger Th Stranger Things now? Uh, in its second to last season? Question yes. mark. Yes. Yes. We, in fact, by the time people are listening to this conversation, we will have launched Volume Two of our fourth season. So we right. launched seven episodes called Volume One, and we're doing only one more season. Wait, you're you're going to do another season after this one? Yes, we are doing season five, and that will be the last. Wow, that's super cool. Wow. Are you going to get in there and direct any of those? Always, always. I mean, yeah. we, you every know, season you have. Correct. Every season, I have directed episode three and four, and it's uh, some of it is superstition, but it started off, the idea when we sold it to Netflix was the Duffers wanted to direct all of them, and they were directing the first few episodes, and it became clear that they were never going to finish writing the season. So I basically said, I'll come to Atlanta where we film, and I'll do a couple of episodes, go hibernate with the script. So I came in, and I ended up doing episodes that you know, the Christmas lights episode yeah, in season yeah. one. Yeah. And oh, cool. these moments that, I mean, I've never directed horror, but mm. what I love about the job, it's probably what you do too, Jason, which is, okay, what tone does this story want? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? There's some directors like Wes Anderson or Baz Luhrmann where their stamp is the same on everything they make. Right. Mm -hmm. That's not the kind of director I am. I'm going to change the free guy looks different than the Adam project right. looks mm -hmm. different than night at the museum. So I'm always, and I learn new visual muscles or I gain more visual muscles on stranger things. And ever since then two episodes a season, and that'll be the same thing next year. That's so cool. So oh, cool. It's so great. It, it's a, it, the, it's that Spielbergian um, type of uh, cinematic uh, approach that, you know, your stuff has always looked great, but there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a muscularity to the way in which those duffers established kind of that that cinematic um, heft. Uh, well, do you know what it is that's interesting? Sean was saying it brought back his, you know, a certain period of his life. Me too. The duffers were born in 84. Wow. So oh, for wow. me, I'm wow. doing a nostalgia trip, right? Uh -huh. but, but, but their show, <laughs> what they're doing is yeah. the movies of yeah. the 80s that they right. watched on VHS in the 90s. That's right. That's, that's the right. love letter they're doing. That's right. I'm right. doing a love letter to my high school years. So right, yeah. right. And it's interesting that we have different access points. And now my stepmom, who's in her mid-70s, loves the show, and so do my daughters. And that's yeah. that's the unicorn thing about Stranger Things is the the demographic the crossover. crossover yeah. Let me ask you something about comedy because, you know, obviously you're a pro in it. And what do you do when you get um, somebody on set that you, an actor, is, is there like a trick you do or some kind of exercise you do when you take a, quote, non-funny person or like somebody who's not known in comedy and try this to... This takes me to my question about Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, why do you keep working with him? <laughs> <laughs> He's just a scene killer. Um, you just go into the editing room and you just yeah. go, okay, let's rework it. Yeah, I've had actors who you definitely go in the edit room you're like, fuck, I got to save this one. I got to <laughs> save it. Um but and no, Ryan someone and I, who's not who's not whose strength isn't comedy. Oh no, I've had it. Like, yeah. look, I I would love wait, to wait, wait, name Sean, names. By the way, by the way, Hayes, that you're putting it really nicely. For some fucking people who are just not funny, <laughs> and you have to make them funny. Here's How about what that? I've learned, guys. I have learned this 
repeatedly, and I so want to give you the famous names as examples because they're yeah. really famous and they're Three, two, phenomenal two, in their uh, in their own like lane. Sure. But here's what I know: you can get a great dramatic performance from a comedic genius of an actor. Yeah, yeah. I've we've all seen it. We've done it. You cannot make someone unfunny hear the music yeah, if right. they are tone deaf. <laughs> and I've literally, there was an actor on, on Night Museum where I'm like, no, no, do you hear, like, take take the pause. Like, ba 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 and then, and then that actor would go, ba 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 Nope, nope, um, listen to me. ba 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 Ba, 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 ba. And it's literally on, on Free Guy. That's what you get. Jodie Comer had never done comedy. And right? we got the name, guys. No, it's not Jodie Comer because oh. she ended up being great. She's, because really, c c she's really funny. She's really funny. But here's how. she For the first few days, she was like Jane Fonda was on our movie, This Where I Leave You, where she's watching the funny swirl around her. And she's like, where do I fucking get my boat in this river? Right, like, yeah. the, it's it's moving too fast. How do I get my boat in the water? Yeah. And with Jodie, <laughs> With Jodie Comer, I said, you're like an accent savant. I've seen Killing Eve. You're like, your ear is insane. That's mm -hmm. how you think about comedy. It is, it is sound. It is inflection. It is rhythm. Hear the rhythm. Hear the pitch. That's where you'll find the funny. And she's working with Ryan Reynolds and Taika Waititi and Utkarsh and Bootkar, who are all such Jedi masters at funny mm -hmm. that she used her ear. So I'll usually, Sean, sometimes they cannot be saved and I'll cut around them or I just won't go to them for comedy. <laughs> okay. I'll literally go, you're the backboard. Everyone just keep shooting. This is the backboard. Their right. name is X. They happen to be in a scene with you. But um, I try That's to find some way. That's my career. Wait, 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 uh, wait, funny, wait, funny, wait. funny, and then cut to Bateman for reaction. Levy, Levy slow down, because Sean's writing all this down. He's trying to, he knows it's not funny. So slow down, and you got the last bit, right? And so just listen, Sean. Not, you just play it back to yourself later, Sean, when it's released. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love, you know, we always joke around, we, we talk about it sometimes, not even just in work, just in, in life, people who aren't necessarily that funny. And by the way, I'm not saying that we, we are the fucking end all or we're, we're particularly funny. They're, you you're know, whatever. extremely funny. I'll no, say it because you can't, you're super funny. No, no but, but I will say that, again, funnier. like there's always somebody funnier. But but people who aren't necessarily funny, they they come at you sometimes because they think like, Oh, you guys rib each other. So they all they do is they come at you really hard in yes. a really weird way. And I, I was doing a, a a tennis match once, a um, one of these a things that you guys opened. Match. Yeah, like years you were ago. Like playing in the match. Yeah, or it was, was, a celeb like, it was thing. like a charity oh, celeb, a celeb thing, thing to raise cool. money for the U.S. Open. And and I was and it was me and Farrell against a couple of guys. And one of the guys. This is a long time ago, so I feel conf confident. But maybe he'll know. And he, all he did was just come at Farrell so hard in this way that I kind of looked at Will and I was like, geez. And he's like, yeah, hey, what the fuck, man? Just <laughs> fucking take your foot off the gas. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> because they had that, their instinct. And I have seen it at work before a couple times too. And it's really awkward. And you're like, man, just cool it. Just don't, no, no. Literally, I, I, I had this somewhat recently where an actor was like like no no but uh, i'm like J -j 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 just stop trying just i'm yeah, begging yeah. you yeah stop that, trying this is not your thing but that's youth i think that's like young that's how i was probably in that audition with you or probably in lots of auditions or whatever you're just so young you're just like i gotta try really hard and you don't know yeah from, but, yeah like, but sean, but sean your there. attitude is different there you're actually trying to do something you're not trying to you're not doing out of, out of uh, 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 yeah yeah fear or yeah, but, yeah. but you know what else it is i think and i talk about this with my daughters a lot uh I think that at a certain point, we all want to have an idea of who we want to be, right? right? But we are each given certain gifts and we are lacking certain skills. Yeah. Yeah. And at a certain point in life, you have to look at what you are That's right. and you have to distinguish it from what you want to That's be. Right. That's because right. Because no one ever got to a happy life hitting their head against a wall if it's not dovetailing with the gifts they have. And I do feel oh, that God, maybe... This is like the best therapy. But yeah. I, it, it took me a lot of years. Like, I remember after Night at the Museum, I wanted to do a dark drama. And I remember Chris Columbus, who was a producer on Night at the Museum, he said, why are you running from the thing that comes easily right. to you? Yeah. Because yeah. then it yeah. doesn't feel like you're doing anything. 
That's right. That's yeah. right. That's exactly right. But it's there. actually, you know, you've just identified the thing you're natural at. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's yeah, weird too? I don't know if true. you guys <laughs> feel the same way. I, I feel at this age, it's almost like within, you know, I'm 52. It's within the last two years. You don't look it, I, man. Thank you. You don't look it. You don't look <laughs> but it. But when that tan fades, I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, they look 70. Yeah. <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah. You are? I woke up this morning. I already felt like a fucking loser. But <laughs> but, but I, 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 it was, I, I think it was quite honestly it was 50 that made me realize all these things and start to and all these things these hang-ups that i had or these ideas or the story that i would tell myself about myself yeah i, yep. I just started to change it yeah and yep. i and the things i was worried about or i cared about i don't care about anymore yeah. i don't yeah i, I don't know it yeah. is what if i'm at i'm right at the i'm 53 and it is definitely like there's a lot that's shitty about midlife but there are some things that yeah. are really fun and the yeah. two that i found is acceptance yeah. god willing some fucking acceptance of what and who you are and yeah. the other is i do find brian talks about this sometimes when we're on set because like we'll walk on and i can i i can block that scene and know my shots in about three minutes now yeah. it did not come that easy and yeah. that smoothly a decade ago and you get a competence at your work mm -hmm. as you get into midlife that is i have i'm finding it enjoyable like really enjoyable yeah We'll be right back. Hey, Smartless listeners. This episode is brought to you in part by ZipRecruiter. Certain people just make my life so much easier. I don't know what I'd do without them, but finding and hiring the right person can be tough, right? You know, some people refer to their assistant as the person who helps them the most in life. I have an assistant who's also, I also live with. His name is Scotty. <laughs> So it's kind of like a two for one. We signed a contract, whatever, it's none of your business. It's like if you own a growing business and need to hire, ZipRecruiter makes hiring so much easier because they do the work for you. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash smartless. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply. Additionally, ZipRecruiter has a complete suite of tools that make it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates. In fact, the hardest thing you have to do is to remember our special URL, ZipRecruiter.com slash smartlist. That's where you go to try ZipRecruiter for free. Once again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash S-M-A-R-T-L-E-S-S. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Smartless is brought to you in part by Helix. We've been huge fans of Helix mattresses for a long time. In fact, we're such big fans of theirs, we all got more mattresses early this year. So what is it that makes Helix sleep so effective? It's their quiz. It takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. It's kind of fun to take the quiz because it's all about you, right? I took the quiz and it's it was a breeze. It's super easy and it's really kind of fun. And at the end, it matched me with the Helix Dusk Lux mattress. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattress is great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. So I got the Helix Dusk Lux mattress. It's perfect. I sleep like a baby every night. So if you're looking for a mattress, just go to helixsleep.com slash smartless. Take the quiz. It's fun. Order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash smartless. That's helixsleep.com slash smartless. Thanks to Audible for their support. With my schedule and how I'm always on the go, I don't have a ton of time to do the things I want to do, like a reading. That's why I love Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre that is French for genre. From bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. All Audible members get access to a growing selection of audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts that are included with membership. You can listen to all you want, and more get added every month. You know what's great about Audible? You can listen to it anywhere. I listen to it sometimes when I'm traveling, 
it's great when I'm working out. It's like a nice distraction. And it's you're working out and getting exercise while learning something. I also do it like, you know, doing chores. If I'm doing like dishes or laundry, who am I kidding? Scotty does that. Let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try it for free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash smartless or text smartless to 500-500. That's audible.com slash smartless or text smartless to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. And now back to the show. Your work ethic is just incredible. The amount of work you're able to put out and at a high level. Do you think that's part of it uh, now even more so? Uh, that, that Because you're so confident with what you're doing, you're so comfortable with what you're doing, that you can take on so much? Because, Sean, your, your output is just stunning. Yeah. I mean, it's... your company is just just thriving um do you feel i bet you don't feel overwhelmed i bet you don't feel like you're under uh servicing anything i rarely do yeah. i i i mean the whole goal especially once i had that like 2014 2015 moment where i was like oh wait i can't control outcomes so i'd better stop living for it i better stop living for box office as if i can control it that was always Just a living fable. For process right? process yeah you cannot like who, who, you don't know if your movie or show is going to do well right. you do it because you believe in it and then you better goddamn well have fun while you're making it yeah right. and enjoy the people that you've hired to work with yes and yeah. that's definitely that's definitely where i've been at the last several years yeah, i've had people awesome. look at me funnily when i because I've, I've sort of said something similar where i said like if i'm going to do something it's going to take me away from my family and my kids which is obviously that stuff becomes more comes into more and more into focus of like of course it's more important than anything else so if i'm going to do it it's, it better be fun and i have had people in a professional setting be like look at me kind of strangely like oh that's important to you to have fun it's work and i'm like no 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 no. we don't get another crack at this this right is on. it now yeah you're yeah. in it now there is no it's not like <laughs> and then i'll do this and then i'll do the thing and then i do this. no no it's now it's right. now yeah for sure it's now for sure it's when, now when what are you waiting for yeah, to, to do that. But Sean, to that point and everything you said earlier about just kind of reaching mid age, middle age and kind of figuring out who you are and staying in your lane or, or, or kind of veering off just ever so slightly, but still kind of staying in that on the same road, at least um, what, you know, just looking at your at what you have coming up, you're like 17 things in production for as a producer. Are you one of those personalities that has to have all of these things going or are you reaching a point in your life where you're like, you know what? I have to find balance because I have, that's what I'm kind of talking out loud for myself. Balance about like, yeah. yes, to Jason's point, you have this company that's just massive and doing all of these things. But are you afraid of downtime? Because I'm just reaching that point where I'm figuring out that balance. I, I used to be, I am not anymore. This long location gig crystallized a lot for me. Um, and, and I think we're making something special, but that's still five months that I missed of my daughter's life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And and to your point, I mean, I think you put it so beautifully like it's happening right now. Right. The thing that you're planning for and goal, you know, goal create like it's it. This is happening and this is all yeah. part of it. So yeah. um and that's the other I don't know Will, I think you have some kids who are maybe teens and I don't know with the ages Jace, I think yours are a little young still, but that was a big part of that 2014 2015 crucible moment where I my oldest was in 11th grade, I think. And I was like, "Wait a second. They're not going to live with me forever." Like that was a revelation. <laughs> yeah. I somehow never thought about it with terror yeah. and the heartbreak of, "Oh, these years that we are a family together, they are finite and they end." And that changed things too. Mm -hmm. You know, this summer, so I'm out on the East Coast in the summertime, because um, when I'm not in St. Bart's, I'm in East Hampton. And um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just, I'm just sorry. You guys should know I'm going for douchebag of the year, so I'm trying to say as much as I can. I think at you once. just locked it. You just well, locked it. I don't yeah, know. No. But um, you take your yacht to blow. But uh, no, actually, you know what? I drive a GMC pickup while I'm out here because I'm also kind of a contrarian. Well, um, is it professional grade? Because if it is, that would make obviously sense. Obviously, it's professional grade. Yeah, yeah. and it's got the uh, multi pro tailgate. Yeah, good for uh, you. Which was developed by GMC. Wow. We what? are professional grade. You sound just like so, the guy who does the commercial. But the point is this so I'm out here, <laughs> and my son, Archie, who's 13, <clears throat> he. He said to me, like, last week, he goes, hey, can I borrow your... He was like, I'm going to go work out. And I said, okay, which has become, like, kind of a new thing. And he's like, hey, can I borrow your shoes? And I said, yeah. sure. And then he's 13, and he's wearing my size 12 shoes. And I don't know why. that It felt like such a, like, a bucket of cold water on my face. I was like, 
my baby is wearing my size 12 shoes. Wow. What? And I just wanted to hug him and like keep him small. <laughs> just be like, yeah. oh, what the fuck, man? Yeah. yeah it, uh, it, it, starting at, at, at fifth grade, they actually start to be like, I'm, no, I'm kind of good. I, I, I want to hang out with my friends this yeah. weekend. And like, and then when, of course, when they're 18, they're just gone. And then they come back once or twice a year if they like you for yeah. some holiday visits. Um, but other than that, their their next stop on the family run is with people they haven't even met yet. And those are going to be their family. Yeah, that's great. That's and intense. it's just like, I, I literally just put Franny on the plane this morning uh, for camp in Europe for five weeks. Wow. Literally, I had to get up. Well, maybe I can this look morning. in on her because if she's probably uh, yeah. close to where I am right now. Yeah. I can pop she's, over she's, and she's, I can hover if you want. Yeah. If, you, if you're near Amsterdam, get over there. Um, oh, she had to go to Amsterdam first, too. She kept saying, yeah, you gotta, I need you, to go to Amsterdam. Yeah, you got you to fill up the backpack. Um, and uh, so, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to train myself to, to be okay with, uh, with kissing goodbye and enjoy life. Go ahead. You know, uh, how was the goodbye though, Jay? Today was I mean, was is she excited to go? Yeah, she was. She was awesome. She was very brave, very happy. You know, nervous, but um, but on it. She's got coping yeah. skills. She yeah. and and yeah. that's the that's the thing I think is all you can really hope for is to try to build them that that healthy you know decision maker on top of their shoulders and then with a good dollop of self esteem. Yeah, because the way that they expect and feel worthy of being treated in the world. Yeah. That's what we're trying to build, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that, yeah. that 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 they go out there and they they find relationships that that deserve them. Yeah. yeah. And that exactly. they don't settle or think they should settle for less. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that. Jace, I can tell you in your case, you're lucky because she's got a great head on her shoulders and she's a great kid. Yeah, she's she, going to be okay soul. and you're going to be fine. Yeah. She's an awesome kid. Objectively, yeah, she's an Thank awesome you. kid. Thank love you. Her. Yeah. And Thank the you. camp goodbye is just warm up for the, the eventual right. college goodbye. That one yeah. is brutal. Yeah. I've How done that twice. Do it wrecked me. Even the college <sighs> tours, going, just driving around and seeing the places where they are going to be going, even two years before they go, I'm going to be a, a disaster. It's such a cliche. I realize that. But I mean, that college tour is a real kind of watershed memory builder. But the goodbye because now they don't live with you anymore and they mm -hmm. won't again. Right. They might, but you know, in some ways you hope they won't. Right. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just all these kind of, you realize all these moments are, they're not going to be reclaimed. So you better be savoring them now at work, at home. Hayes, Hayes, you're lucky uh, that your dad <laughs> left when you were young. Because you didn't have to go through, he didn't, you, you spared him all this shit. He, yeah. He, you know? Now, you Sean, do you, lucky. Sean, do you worry that you're going to gas? And 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 run out of run out of steam right at the moment that you're an empty nester when it's like it's time to get to work because you don't have to worry about the kids back at home and and being like that, I I worry about that I worry about like working super hard while they're still at home and then running out of gas and now the house is empty except for me and Amanda I mean if I I have a thousand other terrors yeah. the gas tank feels full every yeah. morning like someone snuck in and refilled it at night. Yeah, That's yeah. how, and that is, and I know I feel really uh, lucky about that. And by the way, mm -hmm. Sean, the the dad backstory is, if anything, it's given Will Arnett comedy gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel he doesn't like miss it, any of those pitches. I no, he it. hits them all hard. And it's yeah. for like over a hundred episodes now. Yeah, I so, love it. so on behalf of all listeners. Thank yeah. you, Dad. When you see the documentary. Thank you for giving Will Arnett <laughs> such fun. Thank you, you get to, You get to put a face to all those jokes on the documentary. Oh, no, I don't know he if just, I want the face. Oh, I don't know if I can handle crushes. the face. <laughs> That's so yeah, funny. by the way, anybody can make a joke on any subject, but try making a thousand jokes on the same subject. Good <laughs> fucking <laughs> luck. Bring it. <laughs> fucking bring it. Oh, my, oh my God. God. We do a bunch of stuff on food, too, which, Sean, I know you and I have gone round and round on. Although you're naturally beautifully thin. <laughs> Thin and narrow, just like a little, got a little hummingbird. I know. Why are you so in shape? Yeah, you do. You have the body of a Frenchman. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I I don't know what I mean. Yes, just take I've it. heard these things. I'll take it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You I'll and take Ryan. It. But but no. Speaking what's, of Ryan, what's craft I literally... service look like on a set with you and Ryan and and the caterers? I, is there's a salad bar set up every day, right? I'm not big on salad, but I do get super bitchy if I don't eat protein every three hours. I have learned this uh -huh. about myself. Uh -huh. So. 
it, this is where I go for the douche award. You and me are neck and neck now, Will, because sure. one of one of the one of the job duties of whoever is my assistant on a movie is mm. you got to get protein in my body every three hours, or no. the whole crew is going to pay the price. Is this plant yeah. protein? It's plant protein, isn't it? No, it's like you know the no. Ryan Hugh diet. It's like the the chicken, the boring chicken breast, maybe the sashimi. Yeah. I, I, it's like, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Will. I know. Oh, he doesn't know about. Yeah, I was. We, this uh, on the tour. Okay. Which was, <laughs> which was. Really yeah, we don't want to ruin. It. Really yeah, we, don't wanna, we don't want to. We don't want to ruin the joke. No, no, no. You will not ruin it. It's got four or five uses in it. Guys, uh, you know, I was going to uh, make something else, but I got, I got Japanese food instead. Sashimi. <laughs> you know. <so. laughs> It's, it's a take it's on sashimi. Yeah, yeah, but it's an evergreen. It's so I feel like that one's an evergreen. <laughs> like, I feel yeah. like I've heard them laugh at that joke on this show before. Yeah, I probably have. Yeah. And it's still landing. Joke. It's, it's still dad. landing. But wait, do you ever eat, like, crap food? Do you ever, like... I, 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 I love sugar, and if I start... I'm mean, Like, if I had a bag of, uh, like, caramel corn right now, I, oh. I would finish it like it's my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now I... And, like, if I'm... When I'm in an airport especially if I'm alone mm -hmm. and I'll get like one of the, you know, the mega size M&Ms with peanut butter in it. Yeah. Forget yeah. it. What is your number one? Well, I want to go around the horn because I don't actually know this. What's everybody's number one dessert? <sighs> if you could have only one, like your top of the list, go. Uh, dessert. Uh, ice cream. It's, it's always well, ice hang cream. Hang on. It's not your turn. Oh, I thought you pointed at me. What the fuck? God. <laughs> God, not only you can't even wait, you can't wait to get it out and you can't wait to get it in. I mean, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm partial to a creme brulee. I like oh, a, I like a good ooh, creme brulee. Yes. But again, I'm with not a like snappy top. With I like a little crunch top. Sure. I like to work through the crunchy uh -huh, sure. surface to get to the mushy innards. Yeah, yep. that's you like my it when it gets that real methy uh, lighter when they. Yeah, when they it's even better if the they top. do it at the table. So I see someone working. <laughs> Sean's still dying from. You can't, <laughs> you can't wait to wait get to it get out, it. and you can't wait to <laughs> shove it in. <laughs> <laughs> How many times has Scotty said that to you? Wait, Bateman, go. Yeah, I don't dessert, you're not a big I dessert guy either. But I, I can't even imagine you eating dessert, Jason. I do. You, know, you want to know how douchey and t terrible it is? I do like Carbo Light. That's the frozen yogurt with no sugar, no fat, oh, no dairy. Oh, God. I have no idea what it is, but it's cold, it's colorful, and you can eat it with a spoon. It's so, by, by the way, th that's so fucking lame. One of the first times Jason and I, like t over 20 years ago, he was like so excited. And he goes, right down on uh, Crescent Heights in Beverly. Remember that place in the fucking yeah, mall? Sure, and yeah. you were like, well, let's go get the fro, fro yo, fro, fro, go, go, or whatever the fuck you called it. <laughs> and it was like, it was like plastic. Yeah. And he's like, isn't this great? And it's nothing, <laughs> right? And I'm like, no, this is Fucking, no, it's disgusting. I, uh, listen, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not above admitting. I love dessert and I love ice cream, like Sean. I f like Hayes. Ugh. Sean Levy, what yeah. you're in Hungary right now? Well, tell us what do you do in your free time there. Tell us like any kind of crazy stories about the. I, you know. I wish I had crazy stories. I did have. I did. I. I you know. I. I've definitely fought the blues here a bit. I have to admit, I like bet. it's just it's a long haul. I've been alone for most of it. I've had so much goulash. Yeah. Just yeah. To, and and it is as it sounds, right? Yeah. Like that's just kind of that that should be an adjective for how it's been for five Yeah, months. you're pretty east there in Hungary. Yes. Eastern European is a different look. There's a palette there, literally, that is a little bit grayer and And you feel the history. You yeah. feel mm -hmm. centuries of occupation. And yeah. you, yes. Yeah, so, but I did. So I uh, finally realized, wait, I am a happy person. Why am I not happy? I got to go places on the weekend. So I went to Berlin and there I did have a wild weekend. I had, oh, that's I nice. did exactly what you imagine in your head oh, you yeah. would do. And like age inappropriate. I was with my brother. We, we went oh. to a club till 4.30 a.m. Like that, that was the song. Yes, exactly <laughs> right, Jason. That's a start. And it's weird. The clubs in Berlin, I mean, what I kind of noted, like, there's no aggressive kind of creepy vibe. It's just everyone is actually there to listen to that beat that Jason can do with his mouth freakishly well, by the way, yeah. and yeah. just dance. I started as a beatboxer. Yeah. I yeah. love, I love Berlin. I'm with you. I love Berlin. I think it's one of the great cities. It's so much fun. Yeah, great right, restaurants. Right. How much longer? How much longer do you have there, Sean? One day. Truly? This is literally one day more, guys. 
I, oh, this wow. is why I'm like, I'm flying through this because I have my last day of shooting tomorrow and then we move to France for the final two weeks of shooting there in France and then back home. Where in France? Are you going to be in Paris or are you in the countryside? No, we're in the country. We're in the town where the novel is set called Saint-Malo, which is right in Brittany on the coast. It's the westernmost coast of France. Beautiful. So oh we're shooting God. there. Uh, it's beautiful. These huge ramparts in the ocean, massive beach. And it's where this actual event happened, where the Germans occupied it and the Americans came over and they bombed the shit out of the town in order to liberate it. And uh, that's kind of the part of the story that we're shooting. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Sean, we have taken up way too much of your time. Yeah. I love it. Sean. Thank you so much for delighting you us. You are an absolute in delight. In every way. You've delighted us with your art, like I said, and you've delighted us with your uh, your presence here today and your character and your perspective. And yes. you're just a great guy and so happy for you. And you seem so happy legitimately. You really, yeah. We Amen. deserve great. all your success. And Sean more. is always a great hang on or off work. Uh, I mean, buddy, uh, more please. Lots, lots more. Well, I, I've loved chatting with you guys, and I love your show. I'm such a fan, and hopefully I can tell Sweet I didn't push too hard and blow the whole thing. No. You were so, great. You, you, were you, great. Were, you were incredible. <laughs> you were truly. great. We're you telling really thank you right for now. having You're me, great. fellas. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. I Thanks, miss you, boys. Sean, a bunch, buddy. Hurry I home. I miss you, too. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Love you, pal. Bye, bye-bye. Bye, buddy. Bye-bye. That guy, I, I, Sean Levy I is just one of my favorite people in He's the such whole a world. Light, you know. I, I, I try to quit him emotionally and spiritually, sure. but you know, because he doesn't live here anymore. And he does. Go, he he literally again. got seventeen projects in development. It's crazy. I know. And Hayes, He's you were saying awesome. like his his attitude and his energy is so sort of uh, infectious. Yeah. And yeah, it is. It's infectious, and and it and it's so buoyant and, and upbeat, and yeah. kind of yeah. you know, like I can imagine action. what that must be like on a set with a personality like that. That's just always supportive. Never, yeah. it's never yeah. like oh, yeah. you know. I don't know if that really worked. You know, kind of like attitude. You know, you don't want to be around that. <laughs> Let's go again and suck less. Yeah, yeah. he does yes. never. You'll never hear that from him. Right. Um, no, he's he's, uh, he's he's happy and capable. Like that's like a great combo. It is a great combo. That's a yeah. I love all the stuff in the middle about like all when I was I joked around. I was like, this is the best therapy session because he's and even you will were like, it's now now's the time. I love that to just do what you want to do. Like the only person holding you back is you. That all that kind of stuff. It's it's one thing to know it. I mean to to. To hear it, but you have to incorporate it. It's the next, is the hardest. One thing. of the great things that we joked a lot about my my dumb vacation, which was it sh should be noted, the first vacation since before. Yeah, I'm COVID. glad you did so, that for yourself. Yeah. You and Alessandra deserve uh, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah and nice. and we, you know, it's been a crazy two years, and the baby, and he was born prematurely, and all this stuff, just all this stress, and we kind of let it all go. We were down there. You guys haven't been just the two of you for no, like no, 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 ever since January, since before. COVID. And again, I know this like, oh, poor boohoo. There's a lot of people who are like, I've never fucking no, been away. Any so, couple so needs to have just one-on-one -on -one time. Yes, yeah, you sure. do. And, sure. and I will say one of the great things was we were able, we talked a lot about it. And I was like, look, it is fucking now. Life is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that. And you got to like get out into it and, and well, start. Well, speaking of, I want to go back to the things that you guys, that you guys said. No more, no more dinners in restaurants. I like to go out to dinner in restaurants still. Yeah. Yeah, well, we just did it as a family last night, and and Amanda and I nice? said this morning, it's like, let's just say, I, I literally referenced you, Will. I said to Amanda, I said, let's let's do what Arnett's family was it's like. No one in, no one out on Sunday, like yeah. just any day of the week. Um, yeah. it's nice to just commit to just having that bond uh, or just taking a walk. Yeah. And by the way, Alex Arnett, my mom will be so happy to hear that Sunday night, nobody in, nobody out uh, <laughs> is, is still it's alive. Great. Yeah. It yeah. is great. It's so important to have those moments. And we have, we all have a lot of, look, we, you guys are my family. You guys are my extended family too. And, yeah. uh, but we need those moments with our kids and our significant other where we sit down and we're just kind of quiet with each other. Yeah. Super mm -hmm. important. Or that my dad, just lived by mm. that. Mm -hmm. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Who was? Who were the people he was doing it with? Yeah. <laughs> there were folks that didn't Did mind the long be, drive. You ever no one in, them? no one out. <laughs> Did Locked you think the he door. just drove until he ran out of gas, or did he have a destination? <laughs> like, what was the... <laughs> I'm not pumping at the next station. You in the back. What was your name again? <laughs> You're going to do it. 
<laughs> he loved uh, hitchhikers. He sure did. Oh. But you know what? He was nice to the, the the way he left was nice. He didn't. It wasn't a long like there comes well. You know, thing like we'll see it wasn't you later the or long, anything. Good, it was just a good. really quick. Bye. Bye. Nice, 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 Sean. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. Smartless. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.